Dolphins, Mammoths, Life Changers, Trunk Fluffers, Cage the Elephant, Tuskers, Land Whales, Dumbo, Warhammers, Poo Givers, Things Not Talked About in Rooms. Let's talk about Loxodons. Loxodons are a rather interesting race, particularly because they come from Magic the Gathering instead of the old school D&D universe. That being said, I really like how they did the Ravnica crossover, and thus I've added the Loxodon to my repertoire of weird and interesting characters. So if you've ever wanted to play a character that can kill somebody with their nose or suplex your enemies with your own face, then these lumbering elephant, elephantish, elephant, no, fentanyl, eliflex, trunk buddies, elephantante, elephantante, there we go, are for you. Did it in one. The word Loxodon comes from the ancient Greek word meaning giant schnoz. That is a lie. They are actually named for the way their teeth look, which is a huge bummer, and I feel like there was a missed opportunity there. Loxodonta africanus, the African elephant. Sorry, that wasn't more exciting, but there you go. Back into the D&D world, there's not a lot of content this time around. There's less than a page in the Guildmaster's Guide to Ravnica, but there is a lot of homebrew stuff online that we can already use to kind of build off of. These heffalumps get a nice boost to constitution and a minor boost to uh, wisdom there. I'm not sure why I said it like that. But uh, that does feel right for these giant creatures that can live up to like 450 years and some change. And once again, the Loxodon are categorized as medium-sized creatures, which I don't understand because in magic, elephants are three threes. That's three times the size of a normal human. Or a squirrel. I'm still trying to figure that one out. Maybe it's a pack of squirrels? I'm, I'm not sure. And in Dungeons & Dragons, they are huge creatures. So are Mastodons and other elephantile things. Why not just let the players be large creatures? If you can get your DM to let you be a huge size creature, I would definitely do that because it would be ridiculous and you could technically have a barbarian riding on your back if you wanted to. Which that might be awesome. Then again, we could just have you be a mammoth. That could be a whole other video though. We'll think about that. I keep saying mammoth, but I mean elephant. But we all know mammoths are the best elephants, except for elephant elephants. Also good. I'm torn. So you have normal base speed of 30 feet, meh, whatever. And you have advantages on saving throws for being charmed and frightened, which I don't know if that's just because you're old and wise or huge or what. Shouldn't you have disadvantage from the fear of tiny mousy things? Pretty sure that was on Mythbusters, right? I'm gonna look it up. Okay, so in the wild, they can be spooked easily by small things, but they aren't really afraid of mice as a rule. So there you go, moving on. Okay, so here's the good part. You get natural armor and you have a trunk. Wait five seconds for the inappropriate trunk pun and go ahead. Natural armor is pretty awesome because instead of like with the turtles who can't wear armor at all, if you forgo wearing armor as a loxid loxid look loxadoodles, blah 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 blah. Your armor is twelve plus your constitution modifier, which is awesome because this opens up a whole trunk <laughs> of options for beefy wizards and barbarians who would usually forgo armor anyways. The book does state that armor calculations don't stack, so you don't get an armor defense as well. The option is still there, and I think that's pretty great to make. Pretty much any character pretty tough. Then we move on to the trunk. Check out the trunk on this one and all the junk to which it can be contained therein. The booty. Straight up, the book says you can hold objects, push, pull things, make grapple checks with your trunk, but it also says you can't wield weapons or shields. The hell you say? That's gone. We're just gonna throw that out right now. If I want to sit down and play, say, a triple shield wielding solo phalanx loxodon, phalanxodon, or a shield defend, barricadedon, I'm gonna go with phalanxodon, I think that was better. You just watch me, because I'm gonna do it. You pick up a rock with your trunk and bam, you got a club on your face. Slap a spiked gauntlet on there, and you can face punch anyone in melee range with your own face. You don't really punch them wherever, but I mean like, I don't know, maybe avoid the butt region. It's kind of awkward. Anyhow, beyond that, the book doesn't even mention the tusks. Like, I get why they don't have a charge move like a Minotaur would, but come on. Like, if you grab someone with your third arm, they're in a prime place to get their face a good tusking. I mean, ooh, that sounded weird. I mean, come on, at least give them, like, something like a grab ability. Extra bit of damage on a successful grapple? I mean, it's basically the same body part. At the very least, I would allow someone who succeeds in a grapple with the trunk to then use the tusk to get a free reposition of the character. Okay, you successfully grabbed the goblin. Now what? I flip it! Wh where do you want to flip it to? Into space. I just really feel like there's a lot to be done with the size and utility of these giant snoot monsters. To be fair, a lot of that should be discussed between you and your DM. There are also a lot of homebrew variants, like taking a mammoth variant so that you have arctic fur and can withstand cold climates. Mastodon fur. Mastodon? Mastodon furries? That sounds like a metal band cover that I should know about. Is that a thing? I better look that up. Huh. You know, for all the things that I've searched into Google that that could have brought up, Pretty tame. Onward! There are even some things missing that should have bled over from Magic the Gathering, like proficiency with hammers. Wait. What layer am I on? 
son of a... The Luxodon Warhammer was kind of a big deal for a while there. And the Life Chanter, shoot dang, life and toughness? Oh boy! I've played with these ideas in home games. Things like spending your HP to increase your AC on a turn. Or even better, doing that for your allies. A Luxodon Artificer could infuse items with his own AC or his health to boost other players' armors or hit point pool. Uh, there are a lot of options, and it's really fun just trying to integrate the cards into the game. One of my favorites is an item I created so that my players could spend their hit dice to heal once per day. Uh, and it's really cool because it you can give it to them at a low-level item with a really low-level number of hit dice. Then as they level up, you can upgrade it like a flask from Dark Souls. The Luxodon... Luxodon? Locks of Dawn are a really strange race in both Magic the Gathering and D&D. They're kind of weird to look at, and they're usually pretty chill until they're provoked. So the playstyle in both games is more of a passive side, but then once you get it going, whoo baby, it gets mean. So if you haven't played a Luxodon, 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 Lexithan? The hell is Lexithan? That's a Loxodon. And you've had the itch to get out there and play a character with an unusual amount of arms sized appendages. I was going to say three, but take that however you want. Just get out there and give it a try. If you've played the Mastodons and Loxodons before, go ahead and drop us a comment down below. And if you have a sweet elephant deck in Magic the Gathering, let us hear about it. Obligatory call to comment, like, and subscribe. Just share this with all your friends. I don't even care if they like it. I'm a strong boy. I can deal with some negative feedback. I hope you like it. Terraphodon. You will always have a very special place in my heart. Oh, man. Now I need to build an elephant deck. That's probably not going to happen. But it could be another video. I don't know. Remember to keep your dice on the table and out of your trunk. Because you don't know where those dice have been. And that's gross. I mean that. It's your nose. Don't touch other people's dice with your nose. That's just... That should be a rule at everyone's table. Seriously. Keep the dice out of your nose. I see you over there. Table. Put them on the table. On the table.